praise God. I'll, I'll be sharing on doing small things for God. Doing small things for God. I, I'm sure that's quite an interesting subject. Because the desire should be doing great things for God. I believe if you have a friend, someone you care about, someone you love, and this person is going to organize a program, maybe an anniversary are celebrating the person. Everybody is getting ready what to do for the person, what to do to honor the person. I'm pretty sure you would want to do something so significant that when everyone is talking about, do you know who did this, do you know who did that, it will be your name that will be mentioned. You won't want to do something that is not significant. And so that makes it interesting that I'm sharing on doing small things for God. Now, that does not negate the need to do great things. No, you must have that desire already if you are someone that really loves God. But then there's something you can neglect. That is the importance of doing small things for God. In Mark chapter 12, and verse 41, there's a popular story there. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. I read to verse 44. It says, Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury and many who were rich put in much. And one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrant. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had. Her whole livelihood. Here, yeah, Jesus taking us through a certain experience, or the Bible taking us through a certain experience that the disciples had with Jesus. They were with Jesus at the temple and Jesus went to sit at a place where he can have sight of the offerings people were bringing. And whilst they were there, they noticed how people brought a lot of money. Significant amount of money. And they were all given. And they were all given. And here was this widow that came. And she came with something little. And then Jesus told his disciples... That this woman who brought little is the one who has given the most. This small act the woman had performed, according to Jesus, she's the one who has done the most. I can imagine how shocked the disciples were to hear that. You, you don't organize events and you get people to donate, and then when you are, you know, there are some events when you give, then they give you some um, appreciation package for the amount you have given. Now, a lot of times, you might have, even you, you find that in churches, someone has given 2,000 Ghana cities. The, the nature of appreciation um, gift you give the person for that donation is definitely bigger than the person who is giving 100. In some churches, you notice, you'll say, okay, bring your offering. Those, um, they start giving figures, 2,000 you bring. Then you notice the kind of prayer that they'll give you. Then those that will bring 50 Ghana cities, uh, the prayers are different. And it makes sense. It makes sense because normally what 2,000 Ghana cities would do is way more than what 50 Ghana cities would do. But here's Jesus seeing someone giving little and he tells his disciples that if we are to value this, if I am to evaluate what they have done, the woman who gave little 
has actually done the most. And Jesus explained that because the people who gave much, they gave out of their abundance. But then this woman gave out of her poverty. So in giving little, she gave with all. So you have a woman who has done small for God. But she did that small for God with her all. You have a woman who did something so little for God. But she did that little for God with her all. God is not just interested with, or interested with people who are going to do great for him. No, he's also looking for people who don't mind doing small things for him with their all. God is not just interested in the people who build great cathedrals for him. That is important. He's not just looking out for people who build great schools. That's important. But he's also looking for people who can do small things for him with their all. So why is it important to learn to do small things for God? No, because, you see, doing small things for God can be a big sign of maturity. It shows how matured you are in the things of God. Everybody's desire is to do great things. And that's a good thing. If you invite a guest minister to a church and the guest minister comes, the guest minister will, and let's say he's acknowledging people, you would hear him acknowledge uh, the elders of the church, the other pastors of the church, uh, most likely the choir, if they, they sang well that day. But you wouldn't or rarely find the guest coming and he's acknowledging those that cleaned the chairs. Saying, we, we thank God for all the great things that are happening in the church. Um, God bless all the people who clean the chairs. No, 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 no. It's those that sang, those that are the elders, those that are this. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you see, is the little things are despised by men. Men won't see the little and acknowledge them. And so, your ability to do diligently what men will not acknowledge shows how matured you are. That you know that men are going to praise people who do the things that are so great. That when you say, what do you do in, my, in your church? And you mention, oh, I'm part of the choir, part of the prayer warriors, part of the this. People appreciate you. But when you say, I'm part of those that clean the chair, uh, they clean the chairs in the church, um, it's, it looks as if, I mean, that, that is so small. And yet your ability to do that small thing for God with your all shows your maturity. Jesus went for a wedding. He was invited as a guest. His mother was invited also. We know that story. And his disciples were present. The, the mother of Jesus came and mentioned to him that there was no wine. We know how it played out. And then she told the disciples, whatever he asks you to do, do it. Then Jesus comes to meet the disciples. There's some great miracle about to happen. And Jesus meets his disciples. He doesn't tell his disciples, go and start praying. He doesn't tell his disciples, I'm going to give you some cash. Reach out to some of the nicest producers of, of wine. No. He doesn't tell his disciples, you go and sit down in this place. Very soon I'm going to sort out some wonderful wine. You'll be tasting it and um, give me feedback. No. He tells the disciples, go and fill the water pots with water. They did that in obedience and we know, he told them, go and serve the governor of the feast. They did that. And then here was this wonderful miracle. But you must remember that this wonderful miracle happened 
because there were the disciples of Jesus present that he instructed to fill the water pots with water. At a wedding, when everybody's dressed properly, you don't go for a wedding dress casually. No, everybody's dressed wonderfully. The disciples too out there, dressed powerfully. We came with Jesus. Then right there, Jesus is now telling go and start filling the water pots. So with your nice outfit, here you are filling water pots with water. Who could you think will appreciate that? At a wedding? No. But their ability to do that small thing was what brought the great miracle. What small things do you do in your church? I know the great things you want to do, but what small thing are you able to do in church? That despite your age, despite your academic qualification, despite your placement in the society, you don't mind being at, in a wedding and then Jesus still instructs you to fill the water pots with water. Jesus had another meeting, and this time it was in the desert. Three days he was teaching. After a while, the people got hungry. And Jesus asked the disciples to feed them. The disciples indicated, ah, <laughs> there's no place for us to get food here to feed them. And Jesus told them, and one of them made some inquiries and made them know that um, there's something little we have available. Mark chapter 8 and verse 5. It says, he asked them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves of bread and gave thanks. Broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And they set them before the multitude. They also had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said to set them also before them. So they ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Jesus told them, feed them. They realized they did not have what it took to feed them. But then there was something present. It was just seven loaves of bread. Remember, there's the five loaves of bread and two fishes. Then there's the seven loaves of bread and a few small fishes. So he said, what we have is just seven loaves of bread. And it indicates a few small fishes. So whether you're looking at the five loaves of bread and two fishes or you're looking at the seven loaves of bread and a few small fishes, it's still the same thing. There was little. And they brought what was small to Jesus. And Jesus did not rebuke them. Jesus blessed it and used that small for his glory. Sometimes what Jesus is looking for is for a people who can do small things. And then they will see his glory. Sometimes Jesus is just looking for some people who are willing to say, see, what I have is, 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 a, is a few small fishes. It's little, but I'm willing to do much with this little. Jesus wants to feed a multitude. Here you are bringing your, your small loaves of bread. People will be mocking you. They will despise you. You must sound so foolish. The disciples, why are you, why are you taking this seven loaves of bread too. Ah, um, Jesus wants to feed us. Um, he's noticed that for three days we are very hungry. So he wants to feed us. Jesus wants to feed only his disciples. No, 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 not the disciples. All of us, the multitude, the thousands of us gathered here. And you are taking seven loaves of bread to him. There's no way you'll not be insulted. But your ability to still do that small thing for God, despite men despising you, 
is what generates the glory. It's an act of maturity. Jesus told the parable of the talents. In it, he indicated how a man was, the master called his servants, he gave to one five, to the other he gave two, to the other he gave one. Now, the one that was given five, we know what happened. He went to do something with the five, got five more. The one that was given two, did something with it. The one that got one said, ah, ah, this man, you are wicked. Oh. You are wicked, you are wicked. I can see great things given to the others, but for me, you gave one. That, that's wickedness. And we know the judgment that came on him. But let's look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. Let's see what the Lord said to him. Verse 21, he says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So, remember how it played out. That after the master had witnessed the guy with the one despised what was done or what was given him, he took the one and he gave it to the guy with five. But when he was commending the guy with five, he says that, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. So what the, one, the guy with one thought was many, the, the, master, the Lord knew that what I had given was a few. It was little. So the guy with five talents, the five was little. He decided to do much with the little. He did not despise the five talents. That people will be wondering, I mean, how are you going to do the business with five talents? What kind of business are you going to do? Is it um, both loads you are going to start doing? Because you can't tell me you're opening um, a, a big business shop with five talents. You can, this is your great master. And yet his five talents has given you to do business. No, 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 no. That's a shame. So, you are going to start frying him. Five talents. Five, five, five. Not five thousand. Five. But he decided to do much. And so the master said, you have been faithful with a few things. It's not just about being faithful with much. It's about being faithful with a few things. God is looking for people who are willing to do small things for him. There are very few of that. There are many who are available to do great things for God. God is looking for people like Joseph who are willing to be prisoners, slaves, and yet as slaves, it will be indicated that they are blessed. Because as slaves, they did that small thing for God with their all. They did that small thing for God that when there was something that would compromise them. I mean, that is a time to say God has despised me as a slave. Why should I be thinking of, of not doing wrong in the sight of God when God is the one that has made me a slave? No, but Joseph did that small thing for God with his all. So I ask again, what small things do you do for God? What small things do you do for God in your house? What small things do you do for God in your office? What small things do you do for God in your church? Yes, I know God has made you great. But what small things? Don't ever get to a point in your life when you graduate from doing small things for God. Don't ever come to a point in your life where you can tell stories of those days how I used to be sweeping the church hall. But now, thank God, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. No, you are confused. You are not blessed. No matter how high God lifts you, don't graduate from doing the small things for God. In Acts chapter 26, and verse 22, 
Paul speaking, he says, Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come. He says, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witnessing both to small and great. Paul said that I've obtained help from God, but the help I obtained from God is not just to witness to great, but also to witness to small. Paul says, I've not come to a point where I'm saying I've obtained help from God, so I only witness to great people. No, no, no. I've obtained help from God that I can do the great things for God and I can do the small things for God. That is a sign of help. Oh, now God has blessed my ministry. I mean, we, we, we minister to presidents. Praise the Lord. But can you also go and minister to that man in the kiosk there? That woman selling by the roadside there? Or now God has blessed you so much that you only witness to the greats. No, God is willing or is, is open. He's searching to see those who are willing to receive help from him. Not just to do the greats, but to do the small. The, the, the parable of the talents. The one that received five talents. His reward was one. The master said, yes, you are entering into my rest. But he gave him a reward. What was that reward? One talent. He collected the one from the guy and gave it to the one with five. What does that tell you? It means that the guy never graduated from doing small things. You, you just did some small things for me with your all. Now, the master was rewarding him for doing small things by making him do another small thing again. So, in your, in your growth in God... You don't get to a point where here you are, you can't handle small things again. No. You are rewarded again with something again to do. Because God's delight is in seeing people do small things for him with their all. In Matthew chapter 18 verse 2, it says, Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them. And he said, Assuredly, I say to you, Unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for him if a millstone was hung, or a millstone rather, were, were hung around his neck. And he were drowned in the depths of the sea. The Bible says that Jesus took a little child and he put the little in front of the grown ones. You have matured men, matured women. But Jesus, seeing the matured people, the grown up people, he didn't go and pick the eldest, he didn't go and pick the richest. He didn't go and put the one that everybody respected the most. He went for a little child. The one that everybody wants to send on errand. He went for a little child. And he singled out the small in the midst of the great. He singled out the small and put the small in the midst of the great. And told the great. And told the matured. And told the rich. He says, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, you must be humble. You must be like this child. There's something interesting he said there. He says that, he says, verse 4, he said, Therefore, whoever humbles himself as, the lit, as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Notice he didn't say that whoever humbles himself in the kingdom will be the greatest. No, by humbling yourself as a little child, you are the greatest. Not you become the greatest. So, it's not that now you have humbled yourself like a little child. So, God now makes you the greatest. No. Your ability to humble yourself as the little child shows that you are the greatest. He says, whoever receives any of these little children has received me. 
ah, I want to, I, I, I want to, to do something great for God. Let me go and look for the president of the land. Jesus said, if really you want to get for me, the little ones, and if you cause any of them to sin, it will be worse for you. As though a millstone was put on your head and put in the depth of the sea. So what is the charge for you? Is that receive help from God. Not just to do the great things. Yes, we will do great things for God. We will do mighty things for God. But receive help from God this day to also do the small things for God. Receive help from God this day that nothing will be too small for you to do for God. Whether it is cleaning the chairs for God. It's a special program. Everybody is saying it's the anniversary of the church. Yes, everybody is thinking of the wonderful white outfits they wear to come and dance. But yet, in the midst of all the nice things everybody is thinking about, you are thinking about how will you come and clean the toilets for other people? Yes, everybody is, is thinking about the pictures that will be taken. But here you are thinking about how you will serve. This day, receive the grace to do small things for God.